Good morning and a warm welcome to all of you joining our worship service from far and near. We are at the beginning of a brand new year. 2020 was undoubtedly one of the most challenging years for most of us. But there are numerous blessings we should be thankful to God for. Count your blessings and name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. 2021 will be a year of new hope where we will rise anew. Let us prepare our hearts and minds by joining in a collect of purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now enter into a time of confession, remembering all the sins we've committed during the past week. Generous and merciful God, we confess to you and to our sisters and brothers that we have sinned against you, against one another, and against your creation in thought, word, and deed. Through our ignorance, our weakness, and our deliberate disobedience. We are truly sorry. Forgive us all that is past and grant us the gift of new life in Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Now, my dear friends, let's look at each other wherever we are and say the following words of absolution. May God Almighty forgive all our sins and create in us a new heart. May God Almighty forgive all our sins and create in us a new heart. Amen. Let us now join in the collect prayer for today. God of grace, through the mediation of your only begotten, the Lord Jesus Christ, you call us into a new covenant. Grant us grace to draw near with faith 
and join ourselves in a perpetual covenant with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 6, reading from verses 1 to 12. These are the commands, decrees and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. So that you, your children and their children after they may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear Israel and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey. Just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. When you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then, when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is taken from Romans chapter 12, reading from verses 1 to 12. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly or ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ we though many from one body and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophecy, then prophecy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is encouraged, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it delay gently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join in the gradual song together.
reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 8, verses 22 to 25. Glory to Christ our Savior. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were open. His sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to Christ our Savior. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O most gracious and ever-loving God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our sire be acceptable in your sight. O God, the Holy Spirit, you speak to us and we will listen. Amen. A very warm welcome to all of you who are connected to our worship this morning or this day. This is my first sermon as the vicar of this wonderful community, St. Paul's Milagria. Am I tensed or excited? Let me leave that observation for you to make. But let me wish all of you, my dear wonderful people, loving children, a blessed 2021 and God's amazing grace upon you, an amazing people. We began this worship by singing, count your blessings, name them one by one. Did you? I saw a video clip. I'm sure some of you also may have seen this. It says, if you are breathing today, then thank God. Yes. Let's start this new year by thanking God because we are still breathing that we were able to pass over 2020. And I wanted to give this word to you. Capture it, memorize it, cling on to it. Believe in this word, the promise of God for all of us for 2021. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. So do, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Now let me introduce my title for this sermon. I have chosen a title which rhymes, rise, R-I-S-E. But it's an acronym which I'm going to use throughout 2021 and across the board. This is a special title indeed. We are called to rise above and shine for Christ. And I'm going to take each letter of this word rise and explain to you how we can achieve that goal. First, we, let's take the letter R, revitalize. What to revitalize? I'm sure some of you might know this management theory or law which is called Pareto Law, which says paying attention to the vital which is free, not over many which are trivial. 
pay attention to the core pay attention and use your energy towards the vital what is the core what is the vital in our faith journey for us for us to rise above and shine for christ the old testament reading that was read to us today gives a clear answer to that question the vital the core is god put god in the center deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 12 says be careful that you do not forget the lord who brought you out of egypt out of the land of slavery let's not forget the lord who to cast through 2020 and chapter 6 verses 4 through 7 says love your god put god first and remember all his commandments impress them on the children keep the word of god visible close to our hearts close to our lives dear amma appa ammi tati and wonderful children put jesus in the center and put jesus in the center of your children children even if you want to forget the year 2020 that's okay but let's not forget proverbs 2020 which says if you curse your father or mother your lamb will be snuffed out in pitch darkness parents if you are too busy to introduce jesus into the lives of your children i assure you there will be a day you will be too busy worrying about your children therefore let's revitalize our faith the core is jesus second is i inculcate right attitude now the new testament reading romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 says do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed in your mind be transformed in your thinking dear friends what is our pattern of life do you know that one overriding problem that creates lots of problems in our day to day lives may it be in the interaction between ourselves or in the interaction with other people now a good example of that is found in the gospel reading that was read to us today st mark's chapter 8 verses 22 to 25 here we come across a healing of a blind man in bethsaida interestingly when you refer st matthew chapter 11 verses 21 Bethsaida does not receive a very good certificate from our Lord himself. Nevertheless, the healing was a kind of a two-step one. Two-step healing. And the methodology is a little peculiar. Because Jesus takes this man and spats on him. Obviously, a methodology none of us will really like but however let's look into this two step the first step is the man could see but the people were like trees then comes the second step the man could see people as people the vision has been restored fully now let me explain this two step this man 
seems to be having two sicknesses deep inside. One is a physical sickness, the impa impairment of his sight. The second is a spiritual sickness. Now, what is that? This man could not see, that is true. That is a physical problem. But on the other hand, he could not see people as people. That was a spiritual problem. Then Jesus, in this healing, cures both of that sicknesses, or both of those sicknesses. My dear friends, sometimes, as I said, bigger problems because we don't see people as people. We don't consider ourselves or others as imperfect mortals needs God's grace at all times. Let's remember that pilgrimage in Christ means we journey together. When I fall, you carry me. When you fall, I carry you. We mutually depend on each other for skills and expertise. And remember, we leave no one behind. We leave no one behind. Let me read Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, 1 to 2 again. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed in your mind. The other letter of the word rise is S. S, shed off. Shed off the things that are not pleasing to Christ as we step into a new year. Now you may ask, what are those things or attitudes or behaviors or ways that we should shed off? I tell you, my dear friends, that is not a difficult question to answer. I know for sure what I should shed off. You know for sure what you should shed off. This is not rocket science that we all know. But the message is this. Shed it off. There are some accounts you must close. Please do not carry forward to 2021. If we want to rise above and shine for Christ. Then the last is the E. Emerge new. Dear friends, something COVID-19 has taught us very well is this. The, the capacity that you and I, the human beings, possess to change and to adapt. Change is possible, but it needs a will to do. We must have the will and the willingness, the mind to change. Let me quote Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19, which Father Rienzi quoted on the first. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? My dear friends, we must learn to think out of the box. We must learn to think new. Because God is with us. Because God has shown us the deeper capacity that we have to create new. Therefore, my dear friends, God desire for you and for me, for our church, is that we must rise above. Rise above in 2021. And shine for Christ 
in this new year. And he assures us his presence with us. The almighty, creative, wonderful God's presence with us. Therefore, let's remember this acronym. R. Revitalize our faith. Jesus is the core. I inculcate right attitude. S. Shed off what needs to be shed off. E. Emerge new. Then we will rise above and be the great witnesses of Christ our Lord. May the good Lord bless all of you, my dear children, my brothers and sisters. I pray that God's grace will continue with us as we find new ways in our pilgrimage. May the good Lord bless you all. Amen. Let us affirm our faith by saying the creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. During the intercessions, when I say, let us pray to the Lord, your response will be, Lord, have mercy. As we continue to be in the presence of our Lord and intercede with him, we praise God for the new year that we can totally trust him for his guidance for each day for all of us to live, love, and serve him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In this new year, 2021, we must see Jesus. See our neighbors as he sees. Speak to them about Jesus and proclaim his word and deeds to them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In this first Sunday of the new year, many Christian believers are deprived of joining the fellow believers to worship and partake in the breaking of bread, the covenant our recent Lord and Savior gave us. Many congregations continue to limit the number of worshipers due to the current situation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for families, including Christian homes that are going through great financial distress due to the loss of work, employment as a result of COVID-19, which has affected the economy of the country and several infrastructure projects. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We thank God at St. Paul's as a parish, we were able to help over 100 families in a Christmas charity project. Most of the recipients were daily wage earners whose livelihood has been completely destroyed by the COVID-19. Their children attend our Saturday English class and are a part of the Velavatta Bamalapitiya Beach Children's Project. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for our country, industry, trade, commerce, and agriculture, and all other endeavors. 
that the gifts of the earth and human labor will be gathered with respect and shared with joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for our government and all in positions of authority as they handle and discuss sensitive issues such as massive fraud exposures, denial of burial rights, purchase of COVID vaccine, the provincial council elections, and the Mahara prison unrest, that they would treat people with dignity and respect and be wise and compassionate in making decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let us admit our lost condition, acknowledge what God has done for us, and personally believe God's gift. No one is saved by trying to be good. We are saved by trusting in Christ. The end of the year and the beginning of another is an opportunity for a fresh start. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Let's be in prayer continuously. As we pray for all those who need our special prayers, those who are not feeling well, both in body and in spirit, the lonely, the isolated, the misunderstood, and those who are in pain. We particularly remember Mervyn Vijayasekara, Param Vijayaratnam, Dr. Priyanta Virasurya, Sheila Fernando, Dilpa Vijayavardhana, Mano Andy, Shanti Andy, and Daniel A. Sexton. While giving thanks for Daniel and Shanti and Mano for God's healing upon them, while committing all of them unto God's grace and healing, and remembering all those who take care of them. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Let our cry come out to thee. And we also pray for all those who keep special days. We pray for Mary Barrow and Noel Nimalarajan who keep their birthdays today and pray for Kiribanandan and Jennifer Joseph who celebrate their wedding anniversary today. We pray to God for his grace to continuously be with them as we give thanks and praise for each and every one of them. so that God's presence will make the difference through changing scenes of life. Amen. Now let's say the prayer that we say in great expectation. Let's pray together. Is no father the coming of your kingdom and grant that we and all your servants may strengthen together the eternal fellowship of the Holy Spirit. May we joy, be all your son at this coming again in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Dear friends, very warm welcome to all of you. Once again, saying blessed new year to all of you. I'm indeed privileged to be called to be the vicar 
of this wonderful community at St. Paul's Milagria. I'm excited actually to be named as the captain of this world-class team. Let's play the game as a team according to the rules of Christ, our master, always. We have only one master, one boss, that is Jesus Christ at all times. We are sure to win the game. Amen. I have taken over the worship and the worship services will be conducted as usual. Sundays, 6.30 in the morning, 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 5.30 in the evening. And today, being the fifth Sunday, we'll have the 11.30 singular worship. As I say this, I also thank God for Father Rienzi and Father Desmond who had labored in the vineyard of Christ in this church. And we most certainly uphold them in our prayers as they take their own role and place in their new ministries in 2021. The wardens will hand over other pieces and I will be taking over gradually. And I assure you, all that is handed over to me, I will be a good steward in Christ and be responsible. And I also would like to make this announcement. Jeremy David was the Vicar, Vicar's Warden. So Mr. Jeremy David was appointed as the Vicar's Warden by Father Rienzi at the last AGM. And Jeremy wanted to be a lay officer and a gentleman. He made it very clear that by 31st of December, he will resign and pay way for the new Vicar to appoint his own because well. Now, this is a bit funny because I thank Jeremy David for what he is or what he was for his wisdom and contribution in the mission of the church Daswa and say bye. But then I turn the other side and say, we'll come back because I have invited him to continue as the Vickers Warden, because we need the same team to continue as mission continues, only roles changes. So he has been kind enough to accept my invitation, but then he wanted one month's break. But then I thought I will use a little bit of my Vickers power and said, I will give you one week's break. So he will be joining the team as the Vickers Warden in a week's time, but also, or in other words, this also means that as I take over during the first week of my office, I'm little without my guardian angel, the Vickers Warden, but I know the God is, God is with me and all of you all are my loving angels. I also would like to announce that um, Father Ernest will take over as the assistant curate of this church, but he might uh, report during the first week of January. So meaning, once again, until such time, I will all the services 
So you have no other option but to look at my face at all the services. However, Father Yancey will continue to be in residence at this church till 15 of this month because his house in Pedimatalava is yet to be ready. So therefore, after he shifts to Pilimatalava, I will be shifting to the vicarage and Father Ernest will be shifting into the vicarage annex. However, we are planning to do the repairs, the vicarage annex already. So we will be starting it already. I also would like to announce that our manager, Mr. Ravin Vijay Singh, also left with, with effect of 31st December. And uh, we welcome Mr. Oros Jacob as a consultant church operation taking over from 1st of January. I'm sure Oras is no stranger for us, and he is from this parish, so he will be making his contribution and commitment in a different role as the CCO from 1st of January. So as we welcome Oras Jacobs, I request you to uphold him in your prayers. And also we thank Mr. Ravin for his services that he rendered to this church till 31st of December. And I want all the people who are in charge of all the societies and programs to listen to this announcement carefully. Now, 2021, we have step in and we need to rise above and walk in as witnesses of Christ. Therefore, I earnestly request you to take this month, January, I may call a meeting sometimes ahead, but now what you have to do is make a plan for 2021. Keep this RISC in your mind and think, what are we going to do? And how are we going to do in 2021? Then I would like you to make your plans, write it down, and also make a budget. And this budget has to be a nine months budget. January to March, a segment, and then April to December. Plan this out and I, earnestly request you to plan this so that we will be able to sit together soon and plan out our vision and witness. And all other committees, worship committee, lay visitors, Sunday school, we will meet soon. And I have to say this, a special word of thanks to the technical team. I'm sure I have to say this because on the Christmas day, they were working. Maybe when we were having our Christmas meal, they were putting worship together and they were sending me also the bits and pieces to check. And I'm very grateful for them. This commit with this group who are committed so that today we can be connected. Not only today, even those days, just last week, the hectic Christmas and New Year season, they were working around the clock, even on Christmas and New Year Day. I'm very grateful to them. And I pray for them. And I request you to uphold them in your prayer. May the Lord bless you all. Amen.
events, let's now look at each other and share the sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And peace be with you all. The offertory hymn, Light of the Stable, is taken from the cantata we did two years ago. Now, my dear friends, let's say the offer to prayer. Please join with me. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you, Creator and the Lord of the universe, ever adored by the holy angels. Accept these gifts which we present at your holy table, and with them the dedication of our lives to your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing the Lord's Prayer together.
Now, my dear friends, the peace of God, which passes all understand, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Go in hope to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Let us look to 2021 with a new hope and have faith that God is in control. Please join in the final hymn, God is working his purpose out. <laughs> 